Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are so glad that you're able to join in with us today. Amen. Another day, another Sunday, when we come, this is the Lord's Day, and we're coming to give praise and to offer thanksgiving because He has kept us indeed through another week. We thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask Deacon Oliver Thompson to begin the service for us. Deacon Thompson. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My brothers and sisters, morning to those in the audience and the electronic listeners. Today is a special day because we are alive and we can say, Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all your blessings. Yes. Now, this time I'm going to ask Pastor Antonio, which are a melodious voice, to sing for us as the dear husband by the one. Hallelujah. Won't you join us as we worship this morning? Amen. As a dear pants for the war, so our souls gone out to you, oh Lord. Commit and recommit ourselves to thee. 
fill us with your goodness and glory. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of life and the good health. As we prepare ourselves to worship through the reading of your word, songs of praise and the spoken word that will be proclaimed by your servant, Dr. Antonio. We pray that you will refresh his spirit and guide us toward your will. We pray a special blessing upon the listening audience and those who will participate in this service. May your name be glorified in this place and among of all men. Amen. Our scripture reading will be read by Sister Sonia Thompson. And you can turn to, if you have your Bibles, 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 10 to 23. That's 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 10 to 23. This morning, read by Sister Sonia Thompson. Good morning, everyone. The text for meditation this morning is taken from 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 10 to 23, and I begin. And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Then said Solomon, the Lord said that he would dwell in the dark. I have, I surely have built thee an house to dwell in, a set of place for thee to abide in forever. As the king heard the saints about, and he blessed all the congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled his saying. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepeth covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Here let us the reading of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sister Stoner. Thank you. We will continue our worship. Pastor Rosie will be continuing. Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon Thompson. Thank you. Sister Sonia for joining with us in the service this morning. You know, what a week it has been in this year when so many little pieces of history being made, you know, unwanted history, but yet still we are here caught in the midst of it and we're giving God thanks that he's been keeping us. Um, and this is why we're here, just to worship because he deserves the glory and the praise. Amen. And we want to encourage you today to lean on His Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where I 
leaders and members of the Citadel, we're so glad that you're here worshiping with us today. Amen. And we're here on Sundays. We're also online on Tuesdays as well as doing our um, Zoom prayer meeting and calling prayer meeting. Amen. And God is here. His presence is here this morning. We are going to hear the word of God. Amen. But uh, before the speaker comes, we're going to be reading from, again, from Matthew chapter 21. We're reading from verses 6 to 13. If you find with us, Matthew 21, verses 6 to 13. And I'm going to ask Janae, she has a song bubbling in her mind this morning. If she has a song bubbling there, even if it's a worship chorus, to, you know, come and bless us. But in Matthew 21, reading from verse 6 to 13, the disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was turned and asked, who is this? The crowds asked. The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were there buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling dogs. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of robbers. Here ends this morning's reading, and we say thanks be to God for his word. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We call upon Shane Sunday, but I know she's always ready. She's been on the road all over the world singing, so this is not a hard task for her this morning. Amen. song, you know, because this past couple of weeks have been very challenging, but you know, I decided to place God at the helm of my life because I have realized that there's nothing else that matters. So if you know this one, you can sing with me. It's called, We Place You at the Highest yes. Place. My Lord, my Lord, my For Lord. you, my Lord. you're the great high priest. We bless you at the highest place.
to your situation no matter what is happening around he can fix it he is the fixing God and when he fixes something or someone that person is fixed really fixed there is no recall in his fixing and so we just bless the Lord this morning for his presence with us in this humble situation that we find ourselves in. Thank you, Lord. I affirm, I agree with all the welcome that has been extended to you all over this network for you who are listening at this very moment and those who will listen later on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The Lord has bubbled up a message in my spirit one that I thought I had forgotten. And it's so simple. It comes in the form of a statement. Order in the house. Turn to somebody and say, order in the house. Order in the house. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for life. We thank you for your word, which is sharp, quick, and powerful. Now, Lord, as we gather to hear what you will Say to us through your word, Lord. I am asking you, Lord, that you would make the word, your word, clear and easy to understand by both the speaker and those who will hear. And may we, when we hear your word, O oh God, be quick to obey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Order in the house it sounds simple enough wouldn't you say but let me make sure that we are all on the same page because i sense a little bit of teaching going on this morning so i don't know if the holy spirit will let me preach but think of the word order for a moment will you order and order is an instruction to do something i order you to do this i order you to do that it's an order given Order has to do with an organized condition. With items arranged properly, neatly, and harmoniously. Order has to do with a peaceful condition in which the laws are obeyed. Order has to do with a situation where misbehavior or crime is not present or is prevented. Order. Order has to do with the condition something is in when it is functioning properly. I think I need to repeat that. Order has to do with the condition something is in when it is functioning properly. That is order. Stay there with me. Let's go to the word that you all know so well. House. What is a house? A house is a dwelling. A building made for people to live in. Occupants of a residence all of the people for example if i were to use the word house i could say all of the people were wearing masks including those who usually live there house a house can also be a theater in which case the actors and actresses could probably play to a full house but house has or involves another meaning. A house is a place where business is conducted on behalf of. So, a house could be the House of Commons if you are in the UK, the House of Lords 
If you're in the US, it could be the House of Representatives. Or the Senate, for example. The House could be the White House. And I'm not being political. I'm just talking about House. You see, House is very important. So when I say order in the House, what I am trying to say is that the House, whichever one of these you choose to put it to, this order in the house would mean that things are functioning. They are functioning in the house like they should. Things are functioning properly, peacefully, harmoniously. In short, when I use the term order in the house, what I'm saying is this. The purpose for the house is being fulfilled if there is order in the house. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. The house of our focus today, however, is not a political house. The house of our focus today is not even the house in which you live. Although these terms and explanations we just mentioned could very well apply to house in, in any city. The house of our focus today is the house of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The Lord's house. But let's go back in time a little bit. Come with me. I promise I won't give you all the details. I just want to make sure that we are understanding each other. The temple that we are talking about is the temple in Jerusalem or the holy temple. Let's do a little bit of history. The Hebrew word Hamikdash might come to your mind. For it is from that word that we get the translation holy house. Amikdash. Temple. It is in, if you look in the realm of the classical Jewish belief, we will understand that temple has to do with the figurative footstool of God's presence. Mm -hmm. And right away I hear some people thinking Hebrew, and I hear you thinking Shekinah, as in the Shekinah glory mm -hmm. in the physical world. Mm -hmm. Temple. But let me just give you a few minutes. I won't be long. Let's go back and look at the first temple which was built by Solomon during the 10th century, as in 957 BC. That temple took seven years to build. And it was the one that replaced the tabernacle of Moses, no. And the tabernacles of Shiloh, as in Givon. It replaced, that temple replaced the tabernacle as the focal point of Jewish faith. In Hebrew, the tabernacle is mishkan, meaning residence or dwelling place. The tabernacle was a portable entity, talking about from the days of Exodus through the wilderness into the land of Canaan until after captivity. So we need to understand that elements of this mobile tabernacle were incorporated into the first temple in the 10th century if BC and that was a beautiful edifice which I will not try to even describe now because I want to move on to order in the house understand this though that the Babylonians destroyed that first temple they did it in 586 BC and the construction of a replacement started some 51 years later as in 515 BC and that temple the second temple was completed some 20 years later according to the book of Ezra authorization for the reconstruction was given by Cyrus the Great and ratified by Darius the Great great mm. Herod the Great would renovate this second temple 500 years later as in 20 BC so you can judge by the span of time of which I speak that these must have been glorious edifices well constructed for them to last so long. And let me just throw in something for those people who are thinking that the Bible is not so real and it's not true, so true. Do you know that in August of 2007 while some men were laying construction pipes, they found what was thought to be remains of the second temple? Do you know that in October of that same year, archaeologists confirmed and this a discovery of artifacts from the first temple. So history 
is confirming itself. Now, so that second temple was beautiful. You would think that it would last. We need to understand that temples made by human hands are always prone to destruction. This beautiful second temple have you ever heard about a man, a great Roman general, and I put great in quote, by the name of Titus? He had a second in command whose name was Tiberius, Julius, Alexander, these names. But Titus is the one who would later become emperor. He was the one who marched with his army into Jerusalem. He is quote unquote great Roman army that besieged and conquered Jerusalem, destroying that second temple. It had been controlled by the Judean rebels since 66 CE, shortly after the ascension of Jesus Christ. But following that Jerusalem riot of 66 CE, when the Judean provisional government was formed in Jerusalem, the Romans had to make their stamp known and felt. And I know that you know today that an Islamic shrine, the Dome of the Rock, has been on that site since the 7th century. The, the Al-Aqsa Mosque as well is also there. You also know that the fundament fundamental Jews, they are still waiting for their Messiah to come. I have no cards, but I will leave that. I will leave the matter of the development of synagogues after the destruction of that second temple. I will leave a detailed discussion of the expansion of synagogues that followed afterwards when the movement, the Jesus movement was scattered. I will do the same thing for the birth of Christianity. I will leave that for another time. I will not spend this morning talking about when people start to worship on the Lord's Day, whether it's right or wrong. I will not argue about the Sabbath this morning because I'm limited with time and I want to get to what we have to talk about this morning, which is order in the house. So come to me with that text which was read so ably by my dear beloved wife from St. Matthew chapter 21. And I'm not going to read it again, but I want to bring your attention to verses 12 and 13. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And then he says in verse 13, it is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. King James Version says, a den of thieves. Uh, let us understand for a moment that these verses mark a radical act on the part of Jesus. Jesus before that was cool, Mr. Cool, I would say. Healing people, encouraging them, saying to them, go your way, sin no more. But this time, he was rough, it seems. He was tough. I think it was undoubtedly a contributing factor in his ultimate execution, which some people call crucifixion. We need to remember that the atmosphere was rife in Jerusalem for riot at that time. Jesus' action in doing what he did must have created quite a stir, wouldn't you say? Why would Jesus want to do that? And I think you will agree with me that he wanted order in the house. Say that to somebody one more time. Order in the house. Jesus' action meant direct threat to the economy of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They would not like Jesus' move. For one thing, the Pharisees must have been quite nervous since riot in the town would likely mean accounting or explaining to Rome what was happening. They were experiencing what I would call a privileged kind of lifestyle. It meant keeping the peace. His quarters in Jerusalem, Pontius Pilate 
who would normally be in Philippi was now stationed in Jerusalem in his quarters. Rome was in charge after they took over and quelled the riot in AD 67. This action, again I say, was very untypical of Jesus. Move with me for a while. Let's think together for a while. Could it be that Jesus' cleansing of the temple was a catalyst that would propel him into the ultimate fulfillment of his real purpose for coming to earth in the first place? Is it possible that Jesus was alluding to a radical redefinition of the word temple? It is clear that a temple made by human hands is prone to destruction, contamination, rebellion, and loss of its real purpose, that of providing a path to God. Is it possible? And I'm reminded of Solomon, who intimated that God could not live in a temple made by human hands. He said that in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 18. But will God really dwell on earth with humans? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built, Solomon said. So I ask, was Jesus essentially saying through his actions that he was going to create a people for himself, a people who when they accept him as Lord, will make their entire being walking, talking, thinking, worshiping, living temples so that he could truly live in them? Oh, I think somebody remembers the experience of the woman at the well in John 4, 21 to 24. You need not turn here. When she was dialoguing with Yeshua Amashiach, Jesus, who is the Christ, Jesus responded to her, Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on the mountains in Jerusalem. You Samaritans, Jesus continued, worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. That was Yeshua talking. But I love this verse. It comports well with what I just said about living, walking, moving, thinking beings. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father how? In spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers that the Father seeks. Yes. God is the spirit. And his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus is truly awesome. Did I tell you anything that you did not know so far? What does all that have to do with me right now? Mm -hmm. Somebody might say. I am glad you ask. I'm just going to extract very quickly a few principles, not 10, not eight, nor nine, or seven. Just a few. Principle number one. When one's religion become more important than the true worship, then there is need for order in the house. When you are into your religion, religion is more important than the God that is supposed to be served. I am submitting that there needs to be order in the house. That's number one. Number two, when the mechanics of worship become more important than true worship, then there is need for order in the house, in the temple, in the sala. Jesus was indignant because people were more concerned about buying this dog or this bird or this, this ox or this whatever it might be, and I suspect that they might have been overpricing it. It was like a, 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 a disordered or disorderly marketplace. When the mechanics of worship become more important, when the things that go into your service, your worship, I need you to write me a check for $10,000 or else judgment is going to come. I need money. Every time I open my mouth, you need to send me money because I need you to pay for the building. I need you to do this. When people order, I need money to buy me an aeroplane, somebody said. I have six mansions, I have eight aeroplanes, but I want more. 
and yet I say I am a believer. I call myself a Christian. Oh, I shouldn't say that. The third thing, I must hurry along. When the original purpose of the house is violated, mm. then order is disturbed. Yes. When the original purpose, the purpose for which the house was built, the purpose for which it was constructed, yes. when that is disturbed, then you have violated the order of the house. Order is disturbed. I must hurry on. Number four. The righteous should become indignant when there is no order in the house. Now you understand why like Jesus had to do what he did. Some of us, we sit quietly. We won't say anything mm. because we don't want to upset the status quo. Mm. We want to stay political, politically correct. Oh, yeah. I belong to this party or that party. Mm. And if I belong to this party and this party, does or say something wrong even though I'm a member of this party or because I'm a member of this party I am not supposed to say anything Shh. or I belong to the other side but the other side does something wrong and I'm not supposed to say it's wrong because I want to be politically correct let, let the child worship don't you worry praise the Lord so for the little children to come unto me Amen. number five true worship cannot take place unless there is order in the house. And I hear the church say, Amen. Amen. And then, I will just leave you with the sixth one. I am not going to go any further. I could, you could think of several others. The, but I want you to look at this. The perpetrators of this order in God's house are usually convinced that they are helping God out. That they are doing God a favor. That they are doing right things. Yes, God requires sacrifice. Yes, God requires worship. But he doesn't require the kind of worship that Saul used to give. No wonder he had his Damascus Road experience. God wants something above all else. He wants obedience. Yes. God wants the kind of worship that will give him honor. He said, let all things be done in decency and in order. Not my word, that's 1 Corinthians 14, 40. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. As in all, as in all churches of the saints, I borrowed that from 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. How about order in our personal temples, my body? When I'm supposed to be doing something with my body that glorifies God and I'm doing something else, whatever it is. I am submitting to you this morning that when that is being done, your temple is out of order. There's a verse in scripture that I'm going to get in trouble for reading. But don't blame me. Find the Bible, tear it out, cut it out. Blame God, please. I'm just quoting the scripture, all right? Don't stone me. Don't crucify me. Don't take away your love for me. I am the messenger. <laughs> or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor men who have sex with men. Uh oh, I should read that. Let me examine myself. You examine yourself. What you do is between you and your God. I have no right to judge you. I am no better than you, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And trembling. But I'm just reading the word. I need to examine myself. Am I quick to condemn others? Am I gullible or do I seek God's truth? Am I good at keeping malice and envy? Is it easy for me to forgive others? Am I a kingdom builder? Or should my interest be only for me. Am I truly open to the things God wants me to do? Am I willing to resolve that as of this moment, in this day, I am going to strive to ensure that there is order in my personal house? Are you going to do that? I have to hurry on. <laughs> I am going to close off with this. I'm talking 
talking about order in the house and it seems like I am upsetting some people. It seems like I am educating some people. It seems like I am having some people say praise the Lord because they think that they are righteous and you are not. They are not more righteous than you. You see, <laughs> some people think that there is big sin and little sin. And since they only take part in what they term the little sin, they are okay. But you take part in the so-called big sin. So you are terrible and you are going to hell. Deception lies unscriptural. God so loved the world. He loves you. He loves me. Despite our faults. But when there is order in the house, let me tell you what will happen. I'll give you two quick examples and then I'll be out of here. This is what will happen. Look at 1 Kings 8. 10 to 11. It will give you an idea later on. But remember that when the priests withdrew from the holy place after everything was in decency and in order, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord. And the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord hallelujah filled the temple I pray that one day I'd be standing here and, and, and preaching and the glory of the Lord just come and take over so that I cannot say a word because of the glory and because of the cloud of the Lord isn't that what you would want when order is in your house I'll give you one more example this one is nice I'm excited about it it's from Acts chapter 2 and only the first two verses I quickly tell you when the day of Pentecost came they were all together in one place. King James says, in one accord. Verse 2, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And what resulted, I will tell you quickly, was salvation, was healing, was deliverance, was the coming into birth of the Christian church. All that comes through total surrender to God order comes and when there is order in your house when there's order in my house god can have his way will you let god come into your house today don't think about hatred and war and division and strife oh you can disagree with me let's do it as brothers and sisters let's talk together i need to learn to respect your position even if i don't agree with it May I ask you to respect mine even if you don't agree? Because if we can do that, at the end of the day, I will learn something from you or about you. And it's possible that you will learn something from me. There is no space for division in the house. Because when there is division, God cannot do what he wants to do. And I hear the church say, Amen. Bow your heads, you'll be right where you are. And ask the Lord to forgive you if your house is out of order. Pledge to ask him to help you to organize, to set it up so that you can enjoy life, you can have peace and the devil will not have dominion over you. Father, bless your people who are praying to you right now. Minister to them right where they are. Prove to them that once their house is in order, you can step in and perform miracles. Miracles that will go beyond their wildest dreams. Healing, deliverance, victory. I thank you, Lord God, that your power is here. Your presence dominates. Have your way now, Lord. Save somebody. Somebody needs to say, Lord, I come to you. I've never accepted you as Lord, but I'm doing it today. Come into my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit. I accept you now as Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 If you heard the word today, if you prayed that prayer, amen. Feel free to um, judge us on email, amen. And uh, send in prayer requests and so on, amen. Let there be order in the house. Oh, yes. Let there be order in the house. How are we going to know, you know, of the will of God? Let's first start by reading His word. Let's spend some time in His presence. And then, as, as, as Dr. Floyd said, uh, one of the important things is obedience. Amen. Obedience. Obedience. So much is in this order and disarray around the world. Let us first start with us. Let get, let's all get our house in order. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Things will get better. But we're so grateful that you will worship with us here today. We thank um, Sister Wright being here to share with us. Thank Dr. Floyd for the message from the Lord this morning. And Deacon and Sister Thompson for sharing with us today. Amen. Hallelujah. And today we are acknowledging 
that the only true God in our life is Jehovah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We Let's get